Hello everyone. This is uh, Professor Gaurav from Praxis Business School. What I suggest before I start with this class, I suggest a few things. Okay, and I also request you to sit with a pen and a notebook because you need to note down a lot of observations because statistics is all about taking down observations. So I'm going to take you through some pictures, graphs and charts and make you ask you to observe the data. What you see, note it down and come up with what you have observed. Okay, so we can have discussions on that. Okay, so, so let's begin. Okay, so our today's agenda is going to be that we are going to discuss that what statistics is. Okay, and we are going to discuss that why do we need statistics. Okay, in a, in a very storytelling and brief understanding way. And then we're going to see that means how we can better understand the data and represent it and Okay, so this is our agenda today. The objective we're going to discuss about, start discussing about what and why of statistics. Now, if you say that we do not know anything about statistics, okay, let us consider this as a black box and we got no idea that what is going on in this, you know, in this black box. So, but uh, if you put some data inside it, what this field does, this ha field has the potential to convert data into some valuable useful information. And what goes on behind this black box is the scientific techniques to discover knowledge. So we can say that the statistics is basically a field that converts data into knowledge. And this is anyway, this is all we are going to study in the coming time that what's happening and what we're going to do is that we're going to uncover this black box slowly as we move on. Okay. Now, when we said that uh, this is a field that is converting data to knowledge, okay, so the question naturally arises that why do you think that we need data? Now, here, consider a very simple problem. So this is Praveen, he's a mango seller and he sells mango, he has a food store. And Praveen has been observing that over the year, his sales for mango has been increasing. This is demand for his mango has been increasing over the year. Now, he need to figure out that how much mango he should order this year so that he land up getting the, you know, the maximum profit. Now, in this case, if Praveen's choice is such that the demand meets the supply, that is, Praveen could exactly figure out what the customer wants and how much the customer wants, and he could stock his inventory based on that. Then definitely he's going to walk away with the maximum profit. Okay. But if somehow Praveen is not able to figure out and the demand does not meet the supply, in fact, it is either of the cases that the demand is greater than the supply or the demand is less than the supply, then definitely Praveen loses the opportunity to make the maximum profit. Okay, in fact, if his choice is not wise, then he may also run into loss. Right. But suppose that Praveen had maintained the data since the time he has started. Okay. He has recorded the quantity of mango sold for every year. So he started in 2010 and he recorded there's okay, 200 kg of mango got sold in 2010. And in 2011, 350 kg of mango got sold. And that you recorded for all the years up to uh, 2014. Now, here's a question for you. Now, based on this data, can you figure out that in 2015, how many kgs of mango should probably need to stock his inventory with? Yeah, right. So basically, this is. 950 right so we see that over here that the growth of the means the demand has increased at a constant rate okay so this difference this difference is always 150 kg okay. and if, if you visualize this graph and we see that this growth is very constant means it's it's steep okay so in 2010 it was 200 then it went up at a constant rate and here it was in 2014 and it just extended it with the constant slope to 950. 
Now, here is again another question for you. Do you think that in real world things can be so clean, basically that it can everything can have a constant slope like this? Yeah, certainly not. So, and in real world, such a clean graph is never possible. Okay. So it cannot happen that every year the demand went up at a constant rate. Okay. So here comes the question that why statistics? Probably that is not what man, uh, that Ravin had you know, experienced. Probably what he experienced is more like this. Okay, so it's kind of an up and down curve, you know. So some days, sometime it decreased, sometime it increased. Okay, but we can see that over the year the sales had increased. Okay, so it started with two hundred and ended at eight fifty. Okay, now if the scenario scenario is this that the curve is so irregular and not straight, is it possible for you to predict that what's coming up next? I mean, say I have 2015 over here. Okay, so I have 2015 over here. Can you tell me that what can come up next over here? Kishore, can you come up with your idea that you say that, but we can take average. I just would like to listen to you. What are you thinking? Uh, so, uh, the difference in each year, right? Right. The difference between the years, all these four years, five years. Mm -hmm. If you take the average of these five years, then you can expect at least, even though you may not. Uh, Meet up to the expectation, but uh, in the you can see in the year 2014 it's 850, okay. But the yeah. supply is only 800. If you would have taken yeah. the average, it would be at least 825, I think. Maybe it's profit or loss percentage, what you would lose or gain, it would be average that can be maintained, I think, if you take the average. Are you talking about this difference or all the average uh, of all the differences? I'm talking about uh, this. Eight, this difference. Okay, so basically, Kishore, see that this this line does not exist. This line, uh, I just put this line for a comparison of the previous graph. Okay, so this is the reality that has happened. Okay, so probably if you would have said that, I would have taken the difference between the subsequent years, like three hundred minus two hundred, five ninety minus three hundred. So I have say, say like four differences and I could average them out and you know, I add the average to this value and get a value over here. That probably could have sounded something closer. Okay. Did you mean that? Uh, actually, I meant that actually throughout the years, taking this hmm. consideration, you would have predicted the next year average. Uh, that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. So what can happen is that whatever we do okay so as priya said that it can be more okay so probably it might go up in this direction it might go straight or it might be something okay so whatever it is actually maybe only, uh, the, the actual demand can only be observed in 2000, 2015 right so probably the actual demand lies over here. Okay. So if I predict a value say over here, we are making an error, isn't it? Are you getting the idea? Say that we predicted that the sales is going to lie over here, this dot. Okay. So let me change the ink color to a different point. Okay. Say that this is the this is what you predicted based on taking average or difference or your intuitions okay but actually you observe that the true value in 2015 came out over here okay so what we are doing is that since we are not able to measure the actual thing we are doing an error aren't we is this point clear to everyone yes. Yes. okay yes okay so this is the thing that things are so uncertain in this world, so uncertain, and we try to predict the future. There is almost no possibility that we can predict that future for certainty. We can say, yes, this is going to happen. We can never say that. Okay. 
So a difference like this always gets created. Okay, and this difference is what is called the error. And one thing, whenever an error creeps in the process, the only subject that can handle the error is statistics. Okay, so this is how the statistics is coming to see. We are not able to measure anything for certainty. Okay, so we are always making some kind of error. And the only subject that can handle the error is statistics. And this is how the statistics comes into see. Okay. Now, let us see another example. He is a doctor. Okay. And he's working on a research work and trying to come up with a new medicine that can heal the headache. Okay. And with his expertise and experience, he has figured out there are two chemicals, chemical A and B, that can serve a good purpose in healing the headache of the person. However, from his expertise, he has also realized that there is a new chemical C. Okay, including in the including this chemical C in the composition might also serve a very good purpose in healing the headache. Okay, but there is one problem. The problem is that this chemical C somehow have an adverse effect with the chemical A. So it suppresses the effect of chemical A to some extent. Okay. So now when the when the when the question is asked, then say then how much of the chemical A, B, and C are to be used to make the medicine effective? Or say what quantity of the, the these three chemicals, A, B, and C, are to be used to optimize the effective of the medicine. These again are the problems that are associated with large amount of errors. Okay. And understand that, understand one thing that this doctor is not making this medicine for a single person. He is making this medicine to heal the world. Okay. And everyone you see over here are different with respect to their age, with respect to sex, with respect to the all types of biological aspects. They're different. So everyone will respond differently to this medicine. Okay, it might take longer time for someone to heal the headache. It might take a lesser amount of time to heal the headache and it might not work for someone. Okay, so a large amount of error creeps in the process. This is, and whenever the error is creeping in the process, always remember the only subject that can handle the error is statistics. Now, we were talking about the statistics is a subject that deal with error. Okay. So kind of uh, the, the question normally arises that how do the statistics deal with the error? See, understand one thing that error is anywhere unavoidable. So we cannot avoid error. So statistics is not a subject that actually will help you to avoid error. How statistics will help you is that it will help you to design techniques that will help you to reduce the error to the minimum level and come up with solutions that is associated with minimum amount of error. Okay. So statistics is a subject that designs technique to reduce the error level to the minimum and come up with solutions that will that is associated with the minimum amount of error. Okay. Uh, guys, as I also suggest you that you start taking running notes, okay, because at the end of this class, we are going to have a quiz, okay, so it is going to be based on everything that we are learning till now, okay. So I hope that you are ready with your pen and papers and you just start taking down notes as much as you can. If necessary, ask me to uh, pause for a moment and you can continue taking, your, taking down your notes and Okay, we can proceed. Okay, so be comfortable to tell me that whether whatever necessary. Now let me discuss another problem. Now this is a very interesting problem that we do in statistics. The thing is that in this world we are all limited in some aspect or the other. We have limited time, we have limited budgets, we have the limitations of the measuring instruments, we have the limitations of labors. Okay. 
So suppose consider a problem like this where your manager calls yourself and asks that stay in this area we are going to open a new store. So I want to understand the household income of this store. Okay. So now understanding the household income of this entire geography means going and visit to each and every household and ask the, about their income. So that is one way. So you go to each and every household. So they say they're, they're, they're in households. Okay. So and you go to each and every household and you record the income. So also you get say I1, I2, I3 and you keep on getting IN. Okay. So I need to take the average of this. Now the problem happens in all these things is that to reach each and every house, he will come across with these constraints. Okay. For example, the manager said, see, I just don't have time. I want this entire thing within one month. Now a geographical area, say they say anything, maybe, maybe a particular locality, that is also so huge that you won't be able to cover each and every house. So you negotiate with your manager saying that, see, okay, so one month, although it's impossible, but I will try it. But you increase your budget so that I can employ more uh, enumerators and they, they, they can reach every house and by the means record the income. So your manager says that that's not possible. We are limited by budget and all that you have to do is that within this budget. Okay. And sometimes what happens that even if the budget is there, you don't get the experts to visit and ask for the same service. Okay. So with all these things in the mind, the one thing that we can do with statistics is that you can randomly select some of the houses. So you select this house, you select this one over here, uh, you select this one over here and all like that. So you randomly select some of the houses and record their income. Okay, so this is I1, this I2, this I3. And based on what you're observing in this smaller set, we can actually conclude what is going on in this larger set. Okay, so this in statistics we call is that the problem of estimation. So we are estimating, in this case, we are estimating the value of the household income based on a, on, on a very small set. Okay, so we need not go to each and every house and still get a pretty good uh, estimate of what the average income is all about. Okay, so this saves the budget, this saves the time, and this saves, you know, the make, makes us do efficient work. Okay. <clears throat> and finally, what we are going to focus most on this time is that the data exploration, the most fundamental part of statistics. And this is when the statistics starts. So to get a data, you start by describing the data and then you go on to solving all the other problems that we just discussed. So our, uh, our learning is going to be like this, that we are going to start with data exploration and slowly we are going to start learning all these things that we have discussed just now. And here, we are going to start with a case. Okay. Now this case is going to be like this, that I, I, I want all of you to be very attentive while, you're, while uh, understanding the case because that's what we are going to continue for the coming few classes. Okay. And the case is like this. Say that there is a company called Choice is Yours. Okay. And Choice is Yours is an investment consulting company. And this service helps the customer to make wise investment choices. So customer comes to choices yours and they take the consultancies of the consultants present in the company that where they can invest. Okay, and the choices yours helps investors. Okay, so help the customers to choose their, uh, choose their investment choices. And you are an employee in choices yours. So you work in Choice is Yours and Choice is Yours hired you to assist the investors interested in mutual funds. Uh, mutual fund is basically that, you know, it's a collection of stocks and bonds. Okay, so you can see, think mutual fund as a company that brings together a group of people and invest their money in stocks, bonds, and other securities. So what this 
they do and what he said that with the, the, the there is an institution which actually takes money from the customers okay and taking the money they invest in various you know stocks bonds and other securities and each of those investors with the customers owns a share okay which represent the portion of the holdings of the firm so you are an employee in choice is yours and you've been hired to assist investors interest in mutual fund okay and this company has selected a sample of 838 mutual fund okay so keep noting these things down okay so this company has selected a sample of 838 mutual funds and it believes that the customers might be interested in them so you are called okay and you have been asked to present a data about these funds in such a way that the customer that that would make the customers help understand the good investment choices okay <clears throat> now comes the question what facts about each mutual fund would you collect to help customers compare and contrast the many funds remember that you have got the choices used the company has selected 838 mutual funds okay so Kishore is saying that how much return the fund will give in the years and Manoj is saying that based on the benefit that what the customer what the benefits that the customer will get yeah so yeah all of you are kind of very close so basically so all these things can come that when you start collecting the data so that is the good starting point when you collect the data about all that 838 mutual fund and now before collecting the data now there, there it's data collection is a huge thing so there is in infinite amount of information that you can actually collect but you might fix your mind that okay, so what are the things that you are going to look into okay so before collecting the data you should always ask yourself some of the possible questions okay that might be very effective for your analysis for example say what is the amount of risk associated with each of the mutual funds so is the risk very high is the risk very low because the customer would like to know about the risk okay then do the fund focuses on growth securities or value securities the growth securities is something that the growth securities are those companies that are expected to grow quickly in the next year and the value securities are those you know whose stock prices are currently considered under value okay so that's a that's a very important thing as well that uh, am i investing in the growth security or the value securities okay do the fund charges management fees a very important question that okay so i will invest my money in this fund so will the will, will the fund you know charge management fees for me because if they charge fees what will happen that will reduce the percentage return on by an investor okay say that I invest 100 rupees okay and i get a 10 percent return 110 and if i have to give say five rupees to the as a management fees then i get five rupees as a return so instead of 10 percent i'm just getting five percent so that is a very important information then how did the fund perform in the past year now though we actually do not totally believe that what happened is the past is actually going to get reflected in the future might not be in totality but here, how the fund has performed in the past gives some good bit of idea that, okay, so how it can perform in the future. Okay, so these are the things that, okay, so say that suppose that you have jotted down in your mind and what you did is that you have collected the data of all the 838 mutual funds. Okay. So all these rows represent a mutual fund. So, and this goes up to 838 rows. And so here we are. So the first column that you see, objective, it represents the objective of stocks. So it's growth security or the value security. The second one is assets in millions of dollars. The third one is whether the fees is charged or not by the management. Fourth is expense ratio, the ratio of expense to net asset in percentage. Fifth is the risk, whether the risk is high, low, or average. Sixth one is the return in 2005. 
So it's basically a 12 month return in the year 2005. So it's an old data of 2005. Three year return. So it's annual, annualized return from 2003 to 2005. So how much the return came over three years and the five year return. Okay. Now, so you have this data, this enormous data. And this data has how many rows? 838 rows because each of the observations which each of the records correspond to one mutual fund now that all that's a lot of data so you have got a lot of information to study the customers has got a lot of information to study so it's a data on all 838 mutual funds okay so probably there's a simple a simpler way to study the data instead of going through all the 838 results 838 records there should be some methods to you know summarize the data and make it useful for yourself and for the customers okay and here comes statistics statistics can be broadly classified into two branches what is this descriptive statistics okay and and the other one is the inferential statistics descriptive statistics is the branch of data that of statistics that collects, summarize, and presents the data. So here is the stage where you explore the data, where you understand that what is happening in the data, and to put it forward in a simpler way so that everyone, that your client or your managers can understand that what is going on inside the data. Because this is this is the data of 838 rows. They can be, you might be handling a data of millions of rows, okay, and a and, and lot of columns. So there is the need to summarize the data in such a way so that the instance of those graphic and visualization can actually give you idea about what is going on in that entire data. And you should be an expert in doing that. Okay, so minimizing the number of charts, graphs, and bring the effective charts into consideration. Inferential statistics is the branch of statistic that we just discussed a problem that problem of estimation. So based on the larger geo, based on the smaller, some few amount of houses, we actually estimated the household incomes of all the houses in a particular geographical region. So kind of we inferred that what the estimate means, what the actual household estimate would be. Okay, so that is basically the inferential statistics. And we will come up to these parts in the coming time. So now in the presence, we should consider in this part, this, this descriptive statistics. Okay, so we'll consider on this part and see that how we can explore the data. And this is what your work is going to be. Now, before we describe our data, let us understand our data first. Each of the columns that we see, each of the columns that we see is called as a variable. Okay? And each of the rows is called an observation. So what will guide you to summarize this data? These are the two things, variables and observation, that are going to guide you how you are going to summarize your data. Okay. And now these variables, there are of two types. One is quantitative variables, and the other one is qualitative variables. Quantitative variables, as the name suggests, quantity. So we are saying that we are recording some information which we to which we can attach numbers. Okay, say the height, the weight. So we can attach numbers to them. Okay. So this is a quantity. The the uh, say the amount of mangoes that probably need to keep in his inventory. Okay. So these are all quantities. Okay. So these variables are quantitative variables where we can attach numbers to the values. And qualitative variables are variables where we cannot attach numbers. Say the color of the shirt, because it can be red, blue, yellow, green, whatever it is. So we cannot attach numbers to them. So here's a small exercise for you, just a minute of exercise. I want all of you to come up with two variables, two quantitative variables and two qualitative variables. I suggest you write it down in your notebook and come one by one and tell me that what, what you identified. Also understand that whatever you see around you, everything is basically variables. Okay, so just come up with some good things. Just your one minute starts here. Okay. 
Okay, so we got some suggestions from Priya. So she mentioned something. So I'm waiting for Kishore and Manoj to give us some suggestions regarding this. Uh, some some variables, the quantitative variables and qualitative variables. So whatever Priya has mentioned is quantitative. So let's see. We're, we're still waiting for one. Okay, so here are some responses that I want to comment on that I got just now. Okay, so Priya first said that it's uh, the number of laptops in process. Definitely number of laptops in process is a quantitative variable. Then you mentioned that it's app. Okay, so apps in my mobile. Okay, so apps is, app is not a variable. Okay, so type of app is a variable number of apps is a variable so app is basically not a variable okay so remember that water is not a variable but the quantity of water the volume of water is a variable be very clear with this okay so i've seen many people making mistakes in this thing okay and same is money money is not a variable okay so amount of money is variable okay. so when you're telling amount of money profit loss those are the variables okay so whatever you can measure in quantity okay so they describe it in that way okay so i got a response from kishore that how the people respond so, so say that they go to a, went to a restaurant and the restaurant people gave them a survey to do and they responded that how satisfied you are so they were asked this question and they responded very satisfied very unsatisfied satisfied neutral okay so these are kind of quantitative variables okay so other interesting examples could be you know the quantitative variables the time okay the height the am amount of rainfalls in centimeters temperature okay so and all, all these things could have been posed okay so a question came from priya that what variable can be rating if i have to rate someone suppose that someone asks you to rate someone on a scale of one to ten okay so one to ten that can be numerical that you are attaching quantity but if someone asks you to rate some a person in terms of good or bad okay that again is a qual qualitative so there is you, you cannot attach any numbers to good and bad so qualitative variable can be eye color satisfaction level gender type of card okay. <clears throat> 